Hi, I'm Brenda and I'm here to help you to write your memoir and change a life. In this video, we're going to look at a question that is often asked and that is, can I use dialogue to open a chapter? The general consensus is no, do not open a chapter with dialogue. However, in this video, I'm going to show you that it can be done and it is done. So we're going to look at examples that illustrate this point. And then I'm going to show you two examples of dialogue that open a chapter that I think is excellent. So why is there this general consensus? Do not start your chapter with dialogue. The short answer is you need to situate a reader. Whenever you start your scene, your reader needs to know where they are in the story. Where is this scene happening? What is the time frame or the time stamp? What is the time anchor of the scene? And where is it taking place? Those are two crucial elements when establishing a scene. So when we start with dialogue, with conversation between characters, there is no establishment of scene. So therefore, the general consensus is don't do it because you need to set the scene first. So why do I say it can be done and it is done? It's because the dialogue is not conversation. That is the first key point if you want to open with dialogue, you want to open with somebody speaking, it needs to be one person who says one thing and then we move into setting. So let me show you how this is done in a book that I finished reading called Truth to Power by Andre de Reiter. Now this is a memoir that covers the three years that Andre de Reiter was the CEO of Eskom, which is the power utility company in South Africa. Eskom was one of the leading utility or electrical power companies in the world. However, it no longer enjoys that status as it is wracked by corruption. When Andre de Reiter became CEO of Eskom, it was to try and turn the power utility company around. However, it was subject to sabotage and corruption, as we're going to see from one of the chapters in his book that starts with dialogue. And we're going to see in this chapter how direct speech can start a chapter if it has these six characteristics. Before I get to the six characteristics, I also want to bring to your attention, there are seven key ingredients every memoir must have. So look in the links below for my free e-guide that will help you to also know which are the seven key ingredients every memoir must have. Okay, back to those six characteristics of direct speech that you can use in your memoir. The first one is that it needs to be a single person speaking with no response from somebody else. So let's look at this chapter from Andre de Reiter's book where he does exactly that. Boss, I have a problem, the anonymous caller said. They want me to install this, but I can see it's not right. Nobody is listening to me, but I know if we install it, it will break. I know it will break. That is why I'm calling you. It was a Sunday afternoon in May 2020. I had just had a glass of red wine with my lunch and was feeling about as relaxed as an Eskom chief executive could when my phone buzzed in my pocket. I hesitated slightly before answering as the call came from a private number. I get a lot of phone calls as my number isn't that difficult to find and Eskom has several million clients, most of them not too happy. I've been chewed out quite a bit, but you never know whether it might be something useful. So I usually end up picking up these kinds of calls when not in a meeting. In this case, I was extremely glad I did. So there we have the two opening paragraphs of chapter 12. We start with dialogue, we start with direct speech, but we do not continue with it. Andre de Reiter does not go on to then say what he said in response. He goes on to situate us. In this piece, we now know when it's happening, May 2020, 
and where it's happening. So there we have the first two things I've indicated already that we need if we're going to use direct speech well in our writing. One person saying one thing and then go into narrative writing where you situate us, where you tell us where this is happening. And here are the four other things we need to consider in order to use dialogue, the beginning of dialogue or direct speech well. What gets said in the direct speech needs to actually get us to the heart of the chapter quickly. That direct speech, that dialogue needs to be used as a gateway. It's a gateway to what the main focus is in this chapter. And in this chapter, it's going to be on the sabotage that is happening. And because of that, it needs to then have the characteristic of suspense. Your dialogue is going to work extremely well if it creates what I call that lean in factor for the reader. When the reader catches dialogue like this being used by you strategically, the reader will feel it as they lean in to know what is going on. This then can also be used as part of the narration to be a gateway into the protagonist's thoughts. As you can see in this piece, Andre de Reiter lets us into what he's thinking, why he considered not answering the call, but why he actually often answers these types of calls. One of the things I think you do want to avoid in this example is the length of the dialogue. This dialogue is five sentences long. Ideally though, you want it to be shorter. And I'm gonna show you examples of shorter dialogue that I think work extremely well if not better, if you're going to use this technique. So let's look at another chapter in Andre de Reiter's book, and this is chapter 30. Now, in his role as CEO, Andre de Reiter has been doing a good job, and in doing that, he's been upsetting a lot of people. And so between chapter 12, where he gets this sabotage call, and chapter 30, where we're going to look at how dialogue is used here too to open the chapter, he has been poisoned there is this alleged poisoning that is now being reported to the police. And let's look at how dialogue is used at the beginning of this chapter. No, no colleagues, I said in exasperation, do you know what we are dealing with here? Do you know what cyanide is? We were about half an hour into the police interview following the alleged attempt to poison me and my patience was running thin. The two sergeants, one male and one female officer, didn't want to talk about cyanide, but were apparently fascinated by my sinuses and sinus levels. I once again explained that at no stage had my sinuses been a problem. The issue at hand was cyanide. They replied that they would need to consult with experts to find out what the strange substance was. Some of the terms are for the doctors, it's not for us, the female officer said. But cyanide, I protested. So in this example, we can actually see dialogue does happen. There are responses to the opening statement, to the opening direct speech. But let's look at how it's constructed so we can learn how to use it in our writing if we do want to continue with a conversation. Here we have the conversation continuing in indirect speech, reported speech. So the writer uses the technique of opening with dialogue, direct speech, moves into narration, moves into setting the scene, situating us, doing all the right things we need to do as writers to help the reader know where they are, and then continues the conversation with reported speech, with indirect speech so that the conversation continues but it isn't direct dialogue it isn't conversation per se and then it moves in to direct speech now one of the things to think about if you're wanting to use direct speech to open your chapter is to not overdo it in his book of 30 plus chapters only three begin with direct speech so it is a technique you can use it's not a technique you want to overuse. Now you might think, well, if Andre de Reiter did that, perhaps that's his style, but maybe not many other people actually use dialogue to open a chapter. I want to show you how it has been used in a novel that is a Pulitzer 
prize book and it's called All the Light We Cannot See by Anthony Durr. So let's have a look and see what he does with it. You have to swear, Yuta says. Do you swear? Amid rusted drums and shredded inner tubs and wormy creek bottom muck, she has discovered 10 yards of copper wire. Her eyes are bright tunnels. Werner glances at the trees, the creek, back to his sister. I swear. Together they smuggle the wire home. And so it goes on. So this is just a quick look at somewhere else where it has been well used. Let's recap those six characteristics of how you can use direct speech well with your writing. And then I'm going to show you two examples that I think are excellent. Number one, the opening dialogue is actually an opening remark. There is no conversation that follows. Two, you use narration to situate us immediately after the opening remark. Three, the opening remark must take us directly to what is at stake in the chapter. It has to be relevant. Four, use it to build suspense. Create that lean-in factor for the reader. Five, use the narration that follows as a gateway to tell us more about the protagonist or the situation. It's a great opportunity to bring us into the protagonist's thoughts. Don't make it too long. So let's look at two examples that are super short and which I find to be really good. The first one is three words long. Passaport, por favor. With those three words, the writer has immediately established two things. We are in a Spanish-speaking country and we are at passport control. She has used those words to actually set the scene. And when I read it in her opening chapter, I immediately found myself lean into the book. I love travel memoir. And my first thoughts were, oh, where are we? What am I gonna discover? Here's my second example that I find excellent. You're not going to divorce him, are you? Here, the lean in is twofold. Immediately you want to know what is the scoop, what's going on here. The other lean in is that the anxiety in the speaker's words is palpable. And as the reader, I'm curious to know why that is. The speaker has something at stake. So those are two examples where the brevity of the dialogue, of the direct speech, can be used so powerfully to draw the reader in and create the setting of the scene and the chapter that is to follow. But it's all in how you construct the piece. You are not just a writer, you are also an artist. And how you construct a piece is your creative artistry with language at work. So I hope that you have found this to be really helpful and interesting for you. Have you used dialogue in opening a chapter? Will you use dialogue in opening a chapter now that you've seen this video? Do let me know. I'd be interested to hear your feedback. Mm -hmm.